record. I literally brought Energize or I like mixed up Energize and I was drinking it and then I forgot it. So it's back at my house. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm so excited for this call. I don't even know where I got the idea from, probably like part of my PD, but basically I was just thinking about how like, you know, especially in times like this where the world is kind of heavy feeling and some days can be really, really good and some days can be really, really bad or just hard or emotional or whatever. It's definitely one of those times where it's hard to line up like your work ethic with your vision. And I know this is something I talk about a lot. So like for you more veteran coaches, like you probably heard me talk about this like a million times, but I just think it's so important. So that's like why I wanted to bring it up again. Um, so like reconnecting your efforts with your vision and with your goals. And I personally think like I wrote down on my paper, work ethic equals executing your vision. If you think about it, because, um, your vision and work ethic, like they can seem so separate sometimes, but when you translate it like that or like write it down, like, oh, like my work ethic in my business is literally just me executing my vision. Um, sorry if I say execute weird. Chad was laughing at me while I was like going through my notes. He's like, you say that so weird. Um, but yeah, so I think like your work ethic is executing your vision. So yeah. I don't know. That was really helpful for me. So anyways, I wanted to kind of start out with just saying like, there's, there's pretty much two types of people. I feel like in, in this topic, what I'm talking about, maybe in our businesses, there's like the people that are more on the emotional side of the scale. And then the people that are more on like the logical side of the scale. And I have learned, like I started out being such an emotional person, like such an emotional coach. I still am emotional, but I've learned to kind of separate my emotions from my business at certain times. And I think that's super, super helpful because yeah, just because like there's different ways you need to connect your emotions into your business and different times you need to like disconnect your emotions from your business. So like if you're an emotional person, I feel like the hard part of this for you will be um, getting out of your emotions on the day to day in order to be logical and just look at things and be like, okay, this is what I need to do in order to get to this result. Like logic, you know, just clear fact, no emotion. And then for the logical person, it can also be hard because logical people struggle with connecting to those emotions sometimes. So sometimes it's like you're, you know, an emotional person can be so affected by their emotions and connected to their vision. Maybe it's like lighting them up and they're so fired up to go out and work. And so that's where kind of like the pitfall can come for logical people, because then it's like, you need to really like, not like get off of autopilot and like get into your emotions and connect your emotions to your vision, because that's kind of what motivates you to get your work done. Um, so I just wanted to kind of like point out those two types of people. And maybe you guys can just kind of check in with yourself and get an idea of like what type of person you are or where you're at maybe on the scale. Cause I feel like it is a scale. It's not like one or the other. Like I'm definitely both. It just changes. Um, so in, in all scenarios though, like we all have to learn something, right? Like that's the beauty of this is that no matter what type of person you are, like you're going to have to do some growing and learning in your business, especially to be able to just like execute your vision. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about. Um, all right. So I wrote down this quote. You guys might want to write this down. It's, it's from my personal development right now. I'm reading the 12 week year, 12 week year. I feel like I've been reading that for so long, but it's so good. So I don't care. Um, but it says, most of us have two lives, the life we, the lives we live and the lives we are capable of living. Um, so that's by Steven Pressfield. He like quoted it in the book. So it's like a double quote, <laughs> but he said, if you don't align these two things, like if you don't align what we're talking about, like your work ethic with your vision, whatever that is, great or small, then you're not ever going to get to that life that you're capable of living. Like you're just going to sit in this life that you wish that you had, right? Like you're going to be unsatisfied because there's a disconnect with your actions and your vision. So the first question I want to ask you guys is, are you executing effectively and consistently? Because that's really what's going to help us get to the life that we want to live, the life that we're capable of living, like the dream, right? Um, the thing that makes you get excited and emotional. So 
he also said another thing, effective execution will set you free. And I love that so much because it kind of reminds me of like when I first started my business, I was super all over the place and like spontaneous and emotional. And that's just naturally who I am. But I had so much chaos and stress and anxiety with my business. And then when I kind of learned when to shut the emotion off, when to get a little bit more logical about things, that's like truly when I became super effective. And that's when I felt free in this business and successful because my actions and my work ethic were lining up with my vision. And I was constantly or consistently executing exactly like toward this goal and this vision of what I wanted. So Again, the question is, are you executing effectively and consistently? So like, we're going to talk about like what effective execution looks like, but I mean, obviously consistency is self-explanatory, like doing the things consistently, right? Like doing it over and over and over. Um, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. So it's kind of like working smarter, not harder. If you think about it in that term. Um, and most of us, like we don't have the knowledge when we start out as a coach. And so what we seek is all this knowledge. We're like, gimme, 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 you know, like absorbing all the trainings and all the live videos and everything from your upline. And what we need to remember is that you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you aren't executing effectively, you know, according to your vision and whatever your goals are, then it's just not going to matter. Like knowledge is power, but knowledge is powerless unless it's paired with action. Right. So an example of this, just really quick before we dive into like all the how to is like, if you're a diamond, I would say, or pushing to be diamond, or maybe you're in the zone of like diamond pushing beyond like to one star and really solidifying your diamond. If you like, just the reality is if you are signing up three people per month, it's probably just not going to be enough to get you to diamond or to hold that diamond unless you are super effective with your execution and you are getting like all three of those people that you're signing up every single month to be like rock star badass coaches, right? And the likelihood of that is a little bit low. And I'm really intentional with my clients and coaches and, you know, building a relationship with them, checking in on them, making sure they continue with the products. And yet I still have people who fall through. And so when I was in that zone of like pushing for diamond, pushing beyond diamond, I had to kind of, you know, get real with myself and be like, these are my goals. And so my work ethic has to go beyond success club six now, right? Like I have to go a little bit up and above because fact like emotions out of it that's just the way it is like the likelihood of all three people that you sign up being a hundred percent committed with this and then also wanting to turn that into a business is just very low and so what we can do is you know do more work more sign up more people and then the likelihood of having coaches pop or having people who really love this and stay in our challenge groups and continue to order the products like it'll the likelihood will go up and you'll have more success just because you have you know a greater pool of people to pull from so i know that was kind of a lot but that's just an example so the first thing i want to talk about is how do we line this vision up with our work ethic? Um, so obviously we got to define like, what is our vision? Number one. And if you guys want to, you can totally throw this out in the chat. Like if you feel vulnerable and you want to share like what your big goals are, your big vision, um, you don't have to, you can also like write it down in your journal and your notebook, but I always say this to you guys, and I know you're probably like, oh my gosh, like she always talks about her why and the vision, like, so just bear with me if you heard it a million times, because that's just how important like your why is and your vision. Like every time I go back in my own journey as a coach, I could cry about my why and my vision because I was in just such a dark like place in my life and wanted so much better for myself and for my life and my future life and future family. Like it was just something so near and dear to my heart that I could literally cry. Like if I started talking about it and I, I still can, like if I really start talking about it. So ask yourself, you know, like, what's my vision for this business? What's my, why do I want to, and I'm just going to throw examples out there. Cause sometimes I know newer coaches have trouble with this. Um, 
but like, do you want to, you know, retire yourself from your job? Do you want to be able to travel whenever you want with no worry of finances? Do you want to, you know, maybe you're super into education. Like maybe you want to go like get educated on nutrition and dive more into that. Like, do you want to be able to just pay for your education freely? Um, for us, you know, a big one for me was like the van. Like I want to, renovate a van. I loved renovating Phoebe, the RV. So like, I want to renovate a van. And after this van, who knows, like maybe we'll renovate a house or an Airbnb or something else. Like we've really loved doing that. And it's fun to not have to worry about the financial side of things. Right. Um, so another question is like, when, when is the last time you've talked about this vision, you know, on Instagram, on your stories, on your, um, in, in just like a post or maybe like with the people that you love. I think it's, it's one thing to like craft your vision and like really get intimate with it. And it's another thing to just be so obsessed with it that you're like talking about it with people and sharing it on your social media and sharing it with like your significant other or your mom or dad, like family members. Um, so I want to challenge you guys to do that like tonight or tomorrow. Like if you haven't, like if you're new to coaching and you've never shared your vision with your husband or your, um, your best friend and or your parents, like challenge yourself tonight or tomorrow, like go out and talk about it because I think it can really be like a good challenge to get us into that vision and into the reality of like, what if, you know, or if that is actually a real thing. Um, when I was a newer coach, I remember posting on my Instagram, like a post in January that I was going to quit my job in September and renovate an RV and like move into it in September and ended up quitting my job in like May and then moved into the, the RV still in September. But it's just wild. Like, I think it's so important to put those things out there. It's challenging yourself. It's also just like an energy thing. Like you're putting out this energy and I think it, it helps you with the confidence that like you can actually do it. Um, so I think that's all I have to say about your why and your vision. Yeah, it just needs, <laughs> I wrote down, your why needs to make you cry. So if your why doesn't make you cry, dig a little bit deeper. Um, and I know too, like your why can change. Like mine changes like every six months, I feel like, or every time we hit a big goal, like my why totally changes. Um, that's all I had. Yes. So basically like the reason this is so important and the reason I keep coming back to like your why and your vision is because like, if it's so emotional, it's something that's so important to you that it could make you cry. It's not about like tricking your emotions or tricking yourself into feeling, but it's learning that like, you're going to have hard days in the business. You're going to have hard seasons, hard months. Right. And like probably right now might feel like that for you because of what's going on or not. I don't know. Um, but it's learning about how to trump a negative emotion. Like if you're presently having a bad day, you can learn how to trump that negative or like unmotivated feeling with the better positive one. That is your why right? Like anytime I don't want to work or I'm unmotivated, that's just a feeling. And so I, I go into my deep, dark soul, not dark, my deep soul. And I like, you know, dig into my why and my vision. And I'm, I get motivated because it's an emotional thing. Um, so number two is to focus on the activities that matter most first. So a lot of times like you hear, to focus on the activities that matter the most. And that's cool. But like, you want to make sure you're doing this first, because if you're not focusing on the activities that matter most first, you know, and then I don't know, your dog craps in your bed and you have to figure it all out or, you know, your child craps their pants and you have to figure that all out. Like life happens. And so I think the best thing you can do every single day is to, you know, like these are building blocks, by the way, so like, you know, lean into your vision and like dig deep into that, get motivated to work and then focus on the things that matter first, um, matter most first. So like I wrote down inviting and following up with the people that you've invited, because truly if I didn't do anything else in my day, like if, you know, crap hit the fan and it was a really bad day, you know, at a certain point, but if I got my invites and my follow-ups done first, then 
my business is still going to move forward the next day. And I can probably catch up on checking in on my boot camp or checking in on the team pages or um, making a social media post even. Like I can catch up on that stuff the next day. But what I can't catch up on is the invites that I would have sent out. I mean, you could, you could have a set day each week where you catch up on that, but I would rather not catch up on invites one day. So I always say, you know, focus on those most first. Um, and I also wanted to note, like, these should be the things that take up the majority of your time every single day. So if you, you know, are like, and when I say majority of your day, I mean the majority of your work day, like your work, the time that you have set aside to work your business. If, you know, the majority of that work, like, let's say it's like two hours a day only, then if, if a whole hour of that is like dedicated to your boot camp, I think you should really just reassess things because the invites and follow ups should probably be taken up, you know, an hour, if not an hour and a half, and just that last 30 minutes, like focus on something else. Um, and the way, you know, you can figure that out is like, I'm just going to do more invites and more follow ups and maybe a little bit less of whatever else I was doing. Um, so yeah, like for me on days I'm crunched, those are always the things that I do first. And sometimes they're the only things I get done, but I feel confident, like knowing that my business will be moved forward. Like those are the IPA is the income producing actions. Um, so number three is maintain a sense of urgency. And this was a big one I heard from my personal development this month that I was like, whoa, that's so important. And I, I feel like I don't talk about it enough. Um, so like with your work hours, getting really clear on like, what is your attitude while you're working? Like, are you just kind of like lazy on your couch? Just like kind of like, you know, chilling and like, it's okay to, you know, work like that. If you're doing, you know, follows maybe, or five, three, one, like you're just like, you know, commenting on other people's stuff and you're chilling. But like, if you are inviting people, if you're doing those things that are the most important things and you're doing them first, I would highly encourage you to like bring a sense of urgency into that however you have to. So um, maybe using timers, that's been really, really helping me lately. Planning before you start diving into your work, like planning what it is that you are gonna do. So before I sit down and work, like I'll usually sit down and have like coffee or breakfast or whatever in the beginning of the day, and I will like, tune into my brain and be like, okay, I'm going to do invites right now. Look at the time or set a timer. And I'm like, go, you know, like three, two, one, go, let's, let's go. And I feel like that urgency just like forces you to do things really strategically and do them in a shorter amount of time. Um, because it's like that mindset of like, when you have all the time in the world to do something, you will take like, I could take like 10 minutes on one invite. It's craziness. But when I give myself like a set time, sorry, I have a lot of drainage right now. So I have stuffy notes. Um, but if I have a set time where I have to be done with my invites by, you know, like 1230 or whatever, then it's like, okay, it's go time. Like I got to get real serious about this and real like serious about being fast and urgent. Um, so I wrote down on my notes, autopilot is our worst enemy in the business because if we are like working from autopilot instead of like urgency, I feel like we miss out on the reason for what we're doing a lot of the time. So like you kind of lose the energy associated with whatever you're doing. Like if you're sending invites, you should be thinking about helping people. Like I'm about to help people change their lives right now. Like that's amazing, you know? And that energy will flow through your invites. But if, you know, you have this autopilot kind of mindset and you're just like, copy, paste, send, <laughs> copy, paste, send, then it's like that energy is going to flow through there. And again, like I'm not asking for perfection. There are days where I've totally done that. And I don't think my business is going to explode because of it. But like, if you want to be strategic, you know, and level up and really figure out why your business and your, you know, goals aren't really, they aren't moving forward, they aren't getting somewhere, then like, you've got to tune in to this stuff and learn how to be urgent, like 90% of the time. Um, so don't give yourself all the time in the world, even if you have it, like I, totally have all the time in the world to work my business. And I don't give myself all the time in the world anymore. Cause when I was a new coach working full time, I did, and I would waste so much time because I'd just flop around doing invites for like three hours and getting like two done. Um, 
and just remind yourself like that mindset of having all the time in the world is it'll cause you to lose time weird enough as that is um okay so number four is shedding the low value activities that keep you stuck so this could be things like comparing yourself on instagram right like scrolling you're like about to make a post and then you you're like oh i need inspiration you go to like another coaches which is totally fine i do that a lot um but then you get distracted and you're like oh her abs oh like her hair or you know whatever her business and like it's you just gotta snuff that stuff out you have to get rid of it um responding to negativity i found myself getting a lot of negative feedback from stories recently. Like I went out um, to dinner and before we moved here, we came to their house to have dinner with them. And it was right when all the like quarantine stuff was happening. And I got like multiple messages from people like you're, you know, affecting the virus and you're making it worse. And I was like, we have to move. But I realized like I wasted so much time defending myself in those messages and trying to change their minds and their perspectives when in reality, I probably should have just been like thanks for the note like bye you know or just not even responded at all because it's just a waste of time like it is you don't you don't need to waste your time on people that are throwing negativity at you or sharing their negative opinions about you or whatever it is um and then another one I wrote was working with the talkers. So a lot of times, you know, if you're new to coaching, you hear the phrase that there are like the talkers, there's the doers, and then there's like the loyalists or something like that. There's different types of people in the coaching community and the talkers are the ones, you know, that are super amped up about the community, but, and they talk about it, like they want to do things, but they don't ever do things like they don't ever help anybody they don't ever hit success club and that's totally fine like i love them but you as a coach can sometimes get dragged into you know believing that they're going to be your rock star coach and believing that you should spend all your time with them because you think they're going to hit success club but then they don't so that's another like total like a huge time waster that i've totally probably done with like I don't I can't even count how many coaches I've done that with but I'm so aware of it because I've messed up and done it so many times that now I you know can share with all of you guys to just really keep your I guess keep your blinders on keep your lights on for that like however you want to put it just that like there are going to be people that are awesome and that that, that love this community and they aren't, they're going to tell you they want to do it, but then they just don't. And that's, you just got to love them and bless and release. Um, scrolling is another one. You know, I catch myself doing this too. And I think the best thing in the world is when you can catch yourself doing it and stop yourself from doing it. Like it's okay if you mess up, right? Like it's okay if you start scrolling, but like, if you can catch it and stop yourself while you're working, then like, that's, what's really important to learn how to do. Um, refreshing is another one I wrote down rather than like inviting people. I've totally done this where I've had like my list of five people that I'm going to sign up this month, right? I have all their names down pretty in pink or whatever. And then I like go to send them their share of carts and everything's good. I'm going to be at SC 10 by like tomorrow. And then nobody fills out their share cart. And I'm like, what the heck? And then they stop responding. And then I'm just like sitting in my email, like pulling it down, refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. And what I could be doing with that precious time, instead of checking in on all these people is um, inviting more people. Like I could just be going out and inviting 10 more girls and maybe out of those 10, I find one who actually signs up. And then I have a success club point on the board, right? Like I, I was even guilty of that. Like last month I like had my people and I was just like hooked and attached to these people. Sometimes we just need to take all of the, um, what's the word, all of the expectation out of things and just like go into the month, like fresh, like these are the people I want to sign up. But like, even if they don't, I'm going to move forward and invite 20,000 others. Right. And like find my people who are not only going to say they want to sign up, but will follow through and fill out the share card. Um, graphics and I wrote beside this you don't love making like if you are creating something for your team that you don't love making just find something that another coach has already made and use it like I personally didn't want to create a coach course a coach prep course because I thought like it would just be so much work and it's a waste of time and I don't want to do it and Carly has created one that is amazing and she's used a video of me and 
you know, like she's used so many different awesome people in the network in that prep course. So like, I'm not going to waste my time making that prep course when I know like that one's really awesome. And I, I wouldn't find joy in stuff. So I'm going to spend time on it. Not as much time as I am inviting or following up with people, but like, you know, find a balance of like, you don't need to waste your time on like the parts of the business that are not IPAs and that you do not find joy in, like just throw that crap out. Um, and then the last thing I have for this is your mindsets and beliefs that are limiting. And this one is huge. Like I wrote this in like all caps because I think this is something, you know, we as new coaches struggle a lot with. And then once, you know, our big mindsets or our limiting mindsets or beliefs that are big get taken down and torn down and we're like, ha, like I got you confidence. Like I'm freaking confident. I don't care. I'm not insecure anymore. Like I'm going to do this coaching thing. I feel like we think we're kind of invincible, but then like we come upon a new season or a new roadblock or a new self-limiting belief. And it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> like uh, what just happened? I thought like I was good. I thought this was all going well. And then we realized we have to, to like tackle something else. And I personally love that about our business because like our business only grows as much as we grow, right? Like if you come into or run into a negative belief or negative mindset or self-limiting thing that's blocking your way, like that is just a chance for you to grow. That's your ego in the way, right? And, and so don't resist it. Like keep going and work through it and find a PD book all about it, right? Um, so that's the last question I wanted to ask you guys is what has been this? for you lately. Like we, I feel like we all have some seasons, a self-limiting mindset, a self-limiting belief. So what is this for you? You can type it in the chat if you want to, if you want to get vulnerable again, um, you don't have to, you can just write it in your notes, but definitely write it somewhere. Like what for me right now is my self-limiting belief. Maybe it is that like, you think that nobody has money right now. And so you're creating this self-limiting belief that you can't get anyone signed up because nobody has money because everybody's losing their jobs. Like that is a self-limiting belief. Throw it out the window. <laughs> um, I could go on and like give you guys so many other ones. Like, I don't know, but I don't want to like interrupt your thought process or your thinking. Um, I'm just going to give you guys like a minute to do that. Yeah, those are so true and real, like totally been there. Yes, Amanda, I've totally had that too. Yeah, people are laughing at me or like people think I'm stupid. <sighs> Yeah, we can't assume like whatever our issues are, are other people's issues, like the people that were signing up. Like I was on the phone with a girl today who wanted to sign up and she's like, I don't have the money now, but I'm getting like a check from the government in a, in a couple days. Can I sign up then? And I was like, you want to spend your like government check on this? Of course. Like, of course I'll sign you up. So if I would have assumed like she's, you know broke and she doesn't have a job so she probably won't sign up then we probably never would have even had a phone call and I never would have gotten to know her and found out that she wants to join us um these are all so good thank you guys for sharing and being honest and vulnerable I think the the reality is like we all have these self-limiting beliefs like we all have these negative mindsets that kind of like punch us in the face every now and then, you know, maybe before you're going to make a post or before you do something scary or invite people. Um, but the best thing you can do again is like have those tools in your toolbox from your PD, from your team calls, like from your community that remind you of the truth, you know, like the ability to go into your brain and say, like, have a little conversation with yourself and be like, no, 
Amanda, like that's not true. Like she, she's not broke. I'm not going to assume that she's broke and she's not going to be able to sign up with me or, you know, whatever it is, like have a conversation and like tell yourself, tell the self-loading belief off. Um, I do that literally daily. Like I couldn't tell you guys how many times I do that daily. I feel like if somebody could see into my mind, they'd think I would have like multiple personalities. <laughs> disorder or something. Um, but all in all, like all of these things are building blocks, like I said in the beginning. So if you're not seeing progress in your business, it's probably because one of these things are off. So going back, just running through them really, really quick. The first thing was connecting the vision emotionally daily. So like make sure that you're making it a habit to connect to your vision emotionally every single day. Um, the IPAs was the second one income producing actions, like the things that are most important to do first every single day. Uh, the third thing was urgency. And then the fourth thing was getting rid of distractions and losing the self-loaning beliefs. Cause that's just such a huge distraction. So that's what I have for you guys. And I wanted to open it up. If anybody's like free to chat or hang and talk for like however long you have to questions or if we want to go around and like share what we're trying to level up with in our business right now, where we're struggling and where we're trying to change things. Um, I feel like we haven't done that in a while. So I, I want to do that. If you guys are open. And if anybody wants to go first, you totally can just like unmute yourself. Otherwise I can. My thing, I'll just say it because I said it yesterday to Carly. Um, so Heather, you like have always talked about the, the follow and follow method and I've like always done it, but not consistently. And I know that I know that I'm like not doing it every single day, but for like the past, I think like two weeks, two, three weeks, I've been consistently like following at least 20 people daily. And I know that's not a lot, but it is ridiculous how many insights, profile visits, like, um, just new people on my page. I've seen new interaction, new followers. It's wild. Like I've been blown away. Um, and then I've also just been really tuning into like what people want to hear. And for me, cause we just bought a van that's like van life and the van renovations. And so I'm trying to, you know, post about it as much as possible without my page turning into like a van life blog or something. Um, so it's literally like, you know, transformation, van life, fitness, van life, boot camp, <laughs> van life. But that's been working really, really well for me and just consistently like kicking my butt into gear and following people. And I haven't been great about doing the unfollow part, but I will get better with it. That's my challenge this weekend is to tackle like the unfollowing part of the system. So I used to use an app for like unfollowing people that weren't following me back because I want to follow my people. Right. Um, but I got banned from Instagram like a couple months ago, probably like six months ago for that. Um, cause you're not allowed to do that or like use a third party or whatever. But now if you go into your followers, it shows you the 50 people who you've least interacted with. So I just go and unfollow all of those people. Um, oftentimes they are following me, which is unfortunate, but we're not talking or connecting. Um, I should probably just go through and like initiate connections with them. But I just like, um, Jamie said to keep your followers under 3000. So, or like the people that you're following. So I just try to keep it under 3000. So whenever it gets close to it, I just pull it back down. Heather, where do you see the 50 people you've interacted with the least? I have Canadian Instagram. So that might be yeah. a difference. Like we never had music until like two weeks ago, which was fantastic. But, um, we deal with some different things here. So it literally says right there, at least interacted with. Alex, we have it on ours. If you go, um, if you go to your followers, you'll see it. You're just following. following. Yeah. You'll see like who you've interacted with those and who you have, you've interacted with. And they're following. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that's new because I just noticed that like last week and I was like, oh, this is cool. So helpful. Yeah, and mine, if I look at following and then you go to sort by something, like sort by default, you can click the little up and down arrows and then say like, 
report by date followed latest or date followed earliest. So that could be a way to like go through and unfollow people that you've like recently followed. Cool. Yeah, are we sharing like Instagram hacks or just anything that's been working or? Anything that's working or like maybe you know you're struggling with something but you have like a plan of attack or like action you're ready to like implement and get better with? I'll go. Um, I actually just had a call with another coach in our network today to talk about like what I've been struggling with. Um, and well, first I'm going to say like what I think is working for me is I've been pouring more into my current clients rather than like seeking out other ones. And that's been helping some of them um, build their businesses. And I've had a couple of people um, that are more interested now that they've been laid off from uh, COVID. So that's good. And I just feel like I've been struggling with like the whole beach body part of it lately. Cause like, I don't mention beach body on my, um, on my page. I don't like share the product names or anything. And so I always have just felt like I'm like hiding something, but I don't want to be like showcasing that right away. Um, and the person that I talked to today, she said that she has like the same mentality of me. She's a little more open. Like if she like shows her pre, like she doesn't like try to blur out Shakeology or whatever, but she just, cause I was saying how, when I'm inviting, I feel like people have no idea what I'm talking about. Like, even though I'm like, you get your workouts and your meal plans and superfoods. And I just feel like people are still like, what? Um, so she was like, I just share so much about my group on my social media, like in my stories, I'm always saying like sharing clips from my wellness group. And I'm talking about like, I'm on day three of this and whatever. And so that when I start talking to people about it. They already know. Cause they're like, Oh yeah, I've seen that on your story. I've seen, I see you pour your pre every day. I see you do that. And even though I feel like intellectually, I, I, I think I'm doing that just hearing her say it today made it click so much more that I have to like be sharing more of that. So I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but it, it made so much sense to me when she said it, because I'm like, I feel like I kind of go through the motions of like what I'm sharing. Um, and then like, you know, I make a shake every single day and I never share that, you know, I, I make certain things. I do certain things every single day that I'm not sharing because for whatever reason. So it just got my wheels turning a little bit more today. Um, so that's what I, that's my plan of attack for what I'm <laughs> struggling with. Yeah. I once heard a coach say like, um, if you're like not explaining whatever your challenge pack or what like your accountability groups or whatever like and then you go in your conversations and people are confused like that's your signal to like share more um that happens to me all the time with coaching like i'll be like oh my gosh like have you ever thought about coaching and they'll be like what are you talking like what kind of coaching do you do i'm like hello <laughs> do you not watch anything but then i'm like okay i need to share more like that's good insight Oh, um, I didn't realize I was unmuted. I was like, I, something came to me and then I was just like, oh, um, me and two of my coaches are running a free group right now. And um, I, I've gone back and forth with them as a new coach thinking like, oh, well, no one's signing up right away from them. Like, am I wasting my time? I don't want to pour so much into a free group and then have nothing come out of it. Like I... I wanted something immediate from it. And it was such a terrible mentality to have because I realized that um, down the road, so many people were signing up like a month or two later because I had poured value into them. And then when they were ready to start their journey, maybe they weren't ready that day, but then I was the person that they thought of. So um, I really tried to switch my mindset with that and um, have been like really offering a lot more to my people, a lot more um, different free things that I can give them, um, and just value and insight. And, um, me and two of my coaches put together a free group. I came up with it yesterday and asked them to do it with me yesterday. We have like 40 people in there today, like just insane, like ridiculous. So that's the biggest one I've ever had. Usually I'm like sending people the link and I'm like, you're not, clicking on it. Like just go and request to join. Like, why aren't you clicking on it? And this time everyone's like, no, I need this. Please, please, please. Like, where is it? And like, 
just searching for it. So it's really amazing to see so many people so excited and whether it's just good energy being spread in the world or people are signing up like Sunday as soon as we finish. Um, either way, still good stuff. Yeah, I've even found that with like my coach workshops. If um, sometimes like people will be interested in the accountability groups and they'll just join my coach workshop because they want to know like how it all works. And I didn't really know that. And then it's like late, like a week later or a month later, that seed will kind of blossom and they'll be like, hey, like I'm ready to join your boot camp." And I'm like, wait, I thought you wanted to be a coach. And they're like, no, I just, now I know how everything works. So funny. But yeah, they always, they'll always pay off because you're building relationships with people. Anybody else want to share? <laughs> or should I just call on people? Kelsey, do you want to go? Sure. Um, I don't know if I have anything in particular that I'm struggling with. I think um, for me, I've kind of realigned my, I'm sorry, hold on. Could Bobby go up there for a minute, please? Um, I think. No one okay, hold on. Um, I think for a while I was really struggling with like my vision. I kind of lost like what my vision was for my business and kind of where I wanted to take it and like why I was doing this. Um, and I definitely feel like it was impacting my numbers and like it was impacting the way I was kind of engaging with other people. Like it wasn't as organic, I guess. I feel like I was just like going through the motions of everything and not really connecting like myself to the business because I felt, I don't know, I like just hit this wall where I just feel like what I was doing before was working for a season and then like you said, like your why has changed so much. Like my why really hasn't changed. It's always been about staying home with writer, but I feel like my approach just wasn't really aligning with how I was feeling lately. So like, I just kind of totally changed my approach and like my vision for what I want out of this and kind of changed the way that I'm like aligning with stuff. I don't know. I feel like I, I mean, it's hard in this business. You want to like copy what other coaches are doing because they always say, oh, successfully like, do what those people are doing. But I feel like the more that I try to do what other people are doing, the less authentic I feel to myself. And I feel like it was impacting my business. So I kind of just put my blinders on and was like, screw all y'all. Like <laughs> I'm going to do my own thing right now. And like, Leanna, you know that I've always kind of been that way at this business where I'm like, I don't really care how they're going to do it because I'm going to do my own thing. And clearly it's given me success in the business, but I don't know. I feel like <clears throat> just really digging deep into your why and really finding like what aligns with you. Like Alex, you were saying like how there's so many things you do during the day that like you just don't show because it's just like your everyday stuff. And I realized like my normal everyday stuff that I think is nothing to somebody else might actually like impact my business <laughs> you know like they might be interested in that so I'm starting to like share more things that I wouldn't share before because I don't know I just feel like aligning with the brand that you're at currently and like your brands are always going to change but I feel like I just I don't know I feel like I just really changed my mind around the business and then um Vic came into Team Roots Rise's page and did a call before she did our team call. She did like a call on the Team Roots Rise Diamonds page, maybe. I can't remember where I saw it, but I, it really hit home with me because I feel like she kind of felt how I felt and was like just kind of attaching a number to everybody. And even though we all say like, we don't attach numbers to people, like we really care about helping people. Yeah, but most of us are really attaching a number to people because if we're sitting here like, oh, I'm not hitting this, like I'm not, I'm only at Success Club 
eight or nine, you know, whatever you're at. And we're getting frustrated about that. Like it's, it's hard not to get frustrated because it's been so drilled in our head to like hit success club, hit a certain number. Um, and I feel like I've just kind of stopped caring about that, which is why I literally haven't updated the ASC boards at all, because I'm like, I'm trying not to think about success club if I absolutely don't have to, because I feel like it's, Take, it takes my mind away from actually helping somebody. So I've just been really focused on not caring about the outcome, just loving on people and sharing value with them. And it's hard to not attach emotion to it, but I've been really trying to just be like, if they tell me no, just continue being like, no, that's totally fine. Like, how are you doing? How's quarantine treating you? Like, how are you feeling during this season? And just like turning it back on them and just asking how they're doing. And that's something that I failed to do for a while. So I don't know. I feel like my whole vision has just changed and it's a good thing <laughs> because I'm like letting go of things that I've cared too much about that were kind of holding me back, I think. So that's all. That just reminded me of something that I like a big shift in my business. I feel like I made is we were watching some team call. I don't remember what it was, but they said that every time, whatever coach that was speaking said that every time you get a no, it's an opportunity to, to create a new connection with them and then invite them again the next month. And maybe they're still not interested in the next month. That's okay. But they're a person and they matter. You don't just go away because they say no, like then obviously you're going to feel icky. They're going to feel icky. Like these are people like they have emotions and, and like, so I just switched everything. Like every person I talked to, no matter what, I invited one girl to my free group today and she was like, nope, I know you're going to expect me to sign up and that's not what I'm into. And I don't want any of that and blah, blah, blah. I was like, girl, I give up free shit all the time. Like, if you don't want it, that's fine. But like, take it if you want it. And she was like, no, that's, that's okay. But like, she was, um, really surprised by like just my genuine response and like still wanting to talk to her after and she was like wow you're like one of the good ones and I'm like yeah like everyone should like coach like that you know like these are real people um and it just breaks my heart to think that I like didn't do that at the beginning and stuff because I was so attached to um wanting to hit these high goals and these numbers but we are in a connection-based business like creating those connections is going to pay off for you um no matter what I don't know I've been up since five I'm so tired <laughs> Yeah, that's so good. We've all been there, I feel like, where you're just like, oh, I can't believe you would say no. But I always try to like find it or like make it like a game almost. Like, okay, if they're like not into working out, like what else could I connect with them on? Or maybe if, you know, they say like, no, I've already got a routine. Then I'm like, well, what's your routine? Like, tell me about it. Like, I love health. Like, I love talking about this kind of stuff. Um, and I've totally had those people too that are like, you're just trying to get me to sign up or just like kind of sassy. And I'm just like, nope, actually, like, I'm just trying to be your friend. But if you want to join us, like, that's awesome. But that's not like why I'm here. Um, anybody else want to go? Amanda, do you want to explain what you were saying? How to find the people? I was confused. I'm trying to look on my Instagram. I did a screen recording and I posted it in your team page. So you go to Instagram here, and this is my page, and then you click who I'm following. It's going to take a really long time. My life is really bad. And then it says categories, and it says who you interacted with. And I just found out about this. I don't remember who told me, like maybe last week, and I either go through now like every other day, and I just look at their profile and I'm like, if this is someone I vibe with, I reach out and I'm like, hey, thanks for the follow. And I was asked, you know, what they do, where they're from, like the one thing they left out of their bio. If they have where they're from, I ask them what they do or whatever. And then if I'm like, I don't know why I'm following you, I just unfollow them. But that's where it is. Under, if you can see, like your followers and then uh, who I'm following. I wonder if that just isn't on mine because I'm like a business account or something. Mine just says sort by default. But. I think it's new. So the app is updated. Are you in your followers or following? Because in followers, mine won't say that. It's in following. So it's the farthest yeah. right. I'm in the following and mine just says the like sort by default. So I can see like earliest followed or latest, but I also probably haven't updated my app. I like am so bad at that. 
Oh, that's that's probably it because mine just showed up last week. Yeah, I have sort by default too, but there's stuff above it and it, it is pretty new. Oh, yay. That would be nice if that was a thing. Oh, okay, guys. Well, if nobody else has anything they want to share, I know you guys put a little bit in the chat. So thank you for sharing that also. I know, like, when you're newer, it's like, I don't know what's working. <laughs> like, I just started. So just follow your tracker and you will totally find what works. Um, but if you haven't taken a selfie yet, you guys should. I'm going to. Motto. So cute. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging. Have a good night. Go change some lives. Bye.